Right, so uh, I think you guys have been sending in lots of questions um, and some pretty pretty difficult ones, which is good. We can we can try and attempt to uh, answer them all. Um, so I think we've got some of these written down, so I don't know who wants to go first. Uh, Jenny, do you want to perhaps oh, go first? Yes, yes, I will. Okay, there's so many, I don't know which, uh, where to start. Okay, um, I think what, some of these have already been answered, but we have got parents asking what extracurricular activities are there. Uh, and I think it could have been Mark who answered the fact that we have a mixed brochure, which is all the activities in the clubs which we run um, at lunch times, at break times and after school. Um, and actually, even now with the COVID situation, we're still running clubs um, in the lunch times for the different bubbles. Um, we've also got a free school bus students if they want to stay through the clubs after school they can stay and they can get transport home on the bus um, so that ranges from everything obviously all the sports that you'd expect the, us to be offering whether it's football or market or parkour was one of them last year I remember and of course a lot of the water sports which we have managed to put on as well but also there's all the academic sport uh, subjects as well um, and Mandarin Hey, Mandarin, Japanese, Japanese last year. Yeah. Latin, yeah, yeah Latin. Latin. I don't think we've got Mandarin this year. Uh, well, I know we've got Latin as well, um, but we've also got the science clubs and we've got the art clubs, which are hugely, hugely popular as well. There were over forty different clubs at one point we counted last year, more than most other schools. I think, right. yeah, I think it was closer to fifty. I'm, I'm sure yeah. I heard Mr. Horton say fifty, but yeah, no, a massive breadth of. of different activities yeah. that we can we can put on and a lot of that's put on by our staff you know voluntarily during lunch breaks um, going above and beyond to sort of make sure that students have got you know loads of different opportunities right so let's take one from down this end of the table Mr Eddie do you want to go I'll next? go then um, so Covid has gotten away of us having an open evening um, is there any way that we or our, and our children can come and look around the school before September? So um, this is an open invitation if you'd like to come in and have a tour of the school. Um, the senior team will be happy to do that after school hours. So ring the school, make an appointment and we'll do obviously um, COVID safe tours around the school in small groups. And obviously then we can answer any questions you have as well. Brilliant. Sally. Okay. Yes, um, <laughs> I've gone saying, how do I apply for a bus pass? So bus passes go through Cornwall County. We can do our best to chase things up, um, but it does go through Cornwall County and you get assigned to a route for where is closest to where you live. Um, yeah, so, so when you do your application form, you'll get a response from that and they'll have the information about applying for your bus pass. And normally that happens through August. Um, so by September, you already have your bus pass and it tells you where you get the bus and what time you get it. And we're very proactive with our bus company, so uh, you know we work really closely with them. Yeah. So any issues, we can sort those out. Um, yeah, we're also running buses from other areas. So if you're outside of the bus routes to Cornwall Council, um, we've got some different bus routes running. And if you request any different bus routes, we'll look into the possibility of running those as well. Fantastic, Mr. Price, you're next. Right, brilliant. So it says, why should I send my son to Foy? Good question. Okay, so um, I think actually. If you send your son to Foy, we are a school that knows absolutely every single student. So we know every single student more, I would say, than any other school because of actually the small family nature means we get to know everybody. It means that when you walk down the corridor, everybody is greeted off the bus. Everybody, when you're in the corridor, says, hi, how are you doing? That kind of friendly approach really pervades everything we do. Um, so that's important and looked after they're cared for. I think as well as that, we've already talked about the, the breadth of opportunities, so there's so many different clubs, but also as a school, I think that what we really stand for is um, our curriculum, and our, I think our curriculum is really awesome, and I think our curriculum is, is ahead of most people. So you heard Carla talking about uh, real projects, um, it's authentic, it's really real, it means that people make real, pro uh, real kind of like products. It means that you study for nine weeks and there's a week where we do lots of different activities. There can be adventures, there can be projects that are done. And I think that's really different to any other school. I think that next year we are going to broaden our curriculum even further. What we're looking at is we're looking at outdoor adventure much more. Um, we're also looking at doing lots more vocational courses. So I think that the curriculum is fantastic. Extracurricular is, fa uh, is fantastic. We're a family. Everybody knows each other. I think it's fantastic what we actually have to offer. So, and uh, I've sent two of my sons to this school, so uh, I wouldn't be working here if I didn't think it was a great school, and if I didn't think it had huge potential to be even better. Um, my sons have, uh, you know, both had a great time here. They've both flourished. They've both gone on to do great things, um, and they've had a really good, rounded education here. So I, I couldn't have asked for a better school. And when you talk about resorts, I mean, we're talking about um, students last year that have grade nine across the board. 
So you have yep. students that can achieve the highest standards, but you also have students that can, can specialise in whatever subject they want to as well. So yeah. it offers everything. And for me, just 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 sort of lastly on that one, it, it's about relationships. So I I know that both my sons coming through this school have had really strong relationships with you know lots of the teachers. Um, you know they're not they're not just teachers to them. They know you, um, and uh, you know they have a laugh with the, with the with the students, and they really get to know them. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm looking at Miss Rempe here because her and uh, my, my son, who's currently who's still here, you know have have a, a really good relationship, and that's that's with all with all students. Um, you know they. Uh, staff really go above and beyond to develop those relationships. Um, I've got one here which I probably can't answer but I'm going to sort of chuck out there. Um, so are there any teaching methods that deal with critical thinking? Mm. Yeah well that's actually that's really really an interesting topic to use. Um, through what we're trying to do pushing challenge with our students at all levels and I um, also with the uh, high performing learners as well um, we try to teach to the top with students as well. We try to make things more independent for them. The iPads obviously help that because I think it's uh, it would be foolish just to think that they're just a research tool, but they allow our children uh, an independent access to work, which really does actually support the critical thinking as well in our, in our curriculum planning, as well as the delivery. And I think that um, through that, we've really looked at some of the cognitive kind of characteristics that high level learners have. And through those, we really understand that actually there are certain things that high level learners do that are always really successful across the whole world. The people who are at the top of companies have these skills. And what we're beginning to do is we're beginning to teach those skills at school. So um, when you begin to think about it, it's things like metacognition, thinking about thinking. It's about being, uh, Carla was talking about creativity, but it's about creativity in your thinking so that you can actually see patterns and you can fit things together. And th those skills are actually kind of, we're beginning to weave through everything we do in the curriculum as well. Brilliant. Um, anybody else? We've got some more questions. Let's keep going. I've got, um, I think, similar to other questions. What is different about FOI? Um, I think we're very unique. The fact that we are individuals, but we're part of a really strong leading edge academy partnership, which gives us strength. It's allowed us to develop the school over the past 12 months into a completely different place, I think, to what it was. Um, and therefore, you can come here, you can be an individual, you can be parts of teams, you can be parts of music events, you can come and be parts of language events. We cater for anyone. And if you come in and say you'd like to try something, we will try and put that on for you. Um, we've got good links with local colleges. That's going to strengthen us even further in the future. But also, it's about creating a rounded individual. So you've got your academic work, but also you can interact with adults, staff, other people. You can interact with your peers. You can build friendship groups that are going to last forever. And I think that's different with us. You know, it really feels like a family atmosphere here. We, we keep saying it throughout tonight. We are a family. Um, we enjoy coming to work. We enjoy working with the students. And I think the students enjoy working with us. And therefore, when you're happy, you learn. You know, the learning environment prospers and allows children to really flourish and progress. And that's what makes us different, I think. And I think um, tonight is a great example of that. Uh, we've tried something different tonight. <laughs> um, bits of it worked really well, bits of it haven't worked so well. But we, we wanted to be brave and different tonight. Uh, we could have done a run-of-the-mill video. We could have shot it uh, and, and put it out there as a pre-recorded video. But we decided to do something different. And uh, you know, thank you to everybody who's kind of stayed with us uh, for, for most of the evening. And, and hopefully, it's got better for you. Um, so another question here. And I, I think it sort of links into that last question about why, why we're different. Um, do you offer sailing? I saw it on the video. So um, sailing and outdoor is definitely something we are really keen to develop. Um, we have got really strong links with um, lots of local um, water-based organisations, uh, Gallant Sailing Club, uh, obviously the Morvar Sailing Project, um, the uh, Foy Canoe Company, for uh, Foy Kayak. Higher. So, you know, we're trying to build those relationships and we are looking to put on, um, you know, lots of really exciting new things into the curriculum. So we're trying to find space in the curriculum. So things like sailing will become part of what you do when you come to FOI. We already know that, you know, some of the primaries do that. You know, they, they manage to release release children to go down to Pole Carriers for sailing. And, and we'll be looking to do the same thing, but on a broader level as well. So um, stand up paddle boarding and 
kayaking yeah. and all these sorts of things. And, and our location, John, is just seats like you, know, you can yeah, just yeah. walk straight yeah. out to the to beach. The You're there in five minutes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. And, and and part of my role um, at, at the school is is around sort of community and community development. And so we've got lots of really exciting things we're we're working on. Um, some of these projects are long-term projects. They take a long time to come to fruition. We're still talking to um, local organisations about a water sports academy and taking a, a physical building down by the water so that we can actually start to do some of this stuff. Um, you know, the sailing project with Morvar, um, that's been something really unique. And hopefully when, when, when we sort of come through some of the, the challenges around COVID, we'll be able to get out on that water, on that boat, and that will you know, um, become really exciting. So lots of great opportunities that's different in that regard. Brilliant. It's slightly linked. Uh, the question I've got here is, what does the Academy offer for our globe trotting students? Um, so um, we're very fortunate here now. Actually, our, our international links are growing. Um, unfortunately, we had to abandon ship, as it were, from taking our year seven, which is the planned trip each year to take them to Brittany for a day, our Alès Brez trip um, to visit our Breton cousins. So we will be bringing that back in as soon as uh, we are able to. Uh, but we also have a French water sports trip as well, which the children really, really enjoy. A ski trip to Italy. Uh, I know a lot of our older students have taken part in the Borneo trip as well, which has been fantastic. But currently, we're very, very lucky to have secured 32,000 euros, uh, 32,000 euros of funding, of, of European funding as well. Um, and so last year, all our students in years 8, 9 and 10 were offered a free trip to uh, Germany or Italy. Um, so that project will be extended now for another two years uh, and we'll be able to offer those trips also to uh, France and Spain as part of the, an Erasmus project. So on Monday we're going to be, sorry, on Thursday, next Thursday, yeah. we're going to be Zooming with our European um, partners and joining in with a, a project with Augsburg and the, the local library there of a poetry project. But um, really yeah. lots so of things. some great opportunities. Um, Anybody else? I've got another question. But oh, mine's got to be answered, actually. Answer. Matt, I've got one for you. Can you answer this one? <laughs> um, what support is there for children with anxiety? And we obviously know that lots of students, um, you know, it's been a tough year for everybody, and we do have students who are anxious about things. Yeah. And we will have students, you know, particularly anxious about coming to secondary. So what? what yeah, I think we've done, I think we actually, as a school, we've done loads, and we've always done loads in the past. And actually, after, um, after COVID, we really thought about it. So one of the things that we really carefully thought about and planned was a kind of recovery curriculum. And, and based around that, it's kind of thinking about how we don't just go straight in to teaching. But actually what we do is we begin to see where, where the students are coming to us and where they're coming from. Um, and it meant that basically we, we kind of redesigned what we were teaching, the way in which we approach students. So it's about kind of like much more relaxed start. I think that in terms of our uniform, what we did at the beginning, was we really thought about it. actually we really need to make sure that students are comfortable in their learning. Um, but on top of that, we have an email which Lou mentioned earlier, which is compass at fracademy.org, which you can, which anybody can write into, and you can write into if you have a particular um, anxiety or if you have concern. Um, the compass team are really fantastic in terms of yeah, somewhere that people can go to to get extra support. We run a kind of trauma informed school, so we're kind of like really TIS based, and so as a school, all of the teachers are actually trained in those approaches. So it's kind of really thinking about anxiety and and uh, students that have any need any extra support as well. Um, I think our, our pastoral system is great, like really, really fantastic. And it means that we have uh, CGS managers, which, which stands for care, guidance, support. So actually the, they're there, they're non-teachers, so they're, they're permanently with students looking after them. Um, I think we've expanded our form time in the morning. The form time in the morning is really kind of important. We have a, a really developed program of PSHE where we talk to students about uh, any issue, any problem that they have. Um, there are people, there are points of contact the students go to. We have timeout cards. We, we're doing all sorts of things. We've altered the curriculum for students if they're scared uh, about any aspect. Uh, of, of returning to school or being in school so we, we will do anything basically to meet students needs I think and that's that's our approach it's very student centered and it's driven by students what what they need to happen we, we will put in place to make sure that they're successful really 
Fantastic. Yeah, I think that's a, probably a great place to end unless, yep. Ellie, you have anything on your cards that's well, worth... Well, we have one more about the first point of contact and I just wanted to put in the importance of the tutor. Um, as a head of year, so I'm head of year seven, our tutors are the most important part of the school. Um, they take all of that first line of defence for students, so any sort of issues, anything to do with like, homework or just anything that's happening, it's that tutor that you go to straight away and they are just amazing. We've got some of the yep. best tutors. On, on top of that as well, um, all staff, obviously we're really happy for parents to email staff directly. So your son or daughter will have a timetable with the staff members' names there and staff are used to replying to emails because it's quite hard to get hold of teachers during the day, as you probably know. Um, email in and we're really happy to communicate and work with parents to get the best for students. So that's a really good way of contacting. Brilliant. Thank you, everyone. Um, so I think on that note, we're going to start to wrap things up. I'm delighted to say we've got one last performance from the Year 10 band, The Sanitizers. Um, in a minute, we're also going to hear from one of our students who's got something she'd like to say. Um, but I think from all of us here, we'd just like to say a massive thank you for um, listening tonight, bearing with us with some of our technical issues. As I say, you know, this has been a real first for us. Um, if you could see what's gone on behind the scenes, um, I think you'd be really surprised at all the tech that we've got here, but obviously we do have problems. Um, and, uh, you know, despite a great tech rehearsal last week, things haven't quite worked out. But thank you for being with us. Um, all of the content from tonight, lots of it will be turned into shorter videos. We'll go up onto our YouTube channel um, and we'll try and get some more content to you over the next few days. Obviously, you've got now till I think the end of this month to obviously make a really important decision uh, in the lives of your children. Um, we would love it if you came to Foy. Um, but, but equally, if Foy is not the school for you, then that's absolutely fine. But do just take that chance to come and see us, yep. pick up the phone, book an opportunity to come around and have a look around. We have got some quite exciting stuff coming up over the next few years. We've got a big project uh, that we're working on with the Department for Education, um, about a four and a half million pound um, sort of development project, which is going to see various areas of the school improved. Um, we're doing things all the time to improve this school. Um, it's a really exciting time. We are definitely uh, on the up. Our year seven numbers uh, this year were the highest in uh, a long time and we, we, we know that's because we've turned a corner and uh, the team here is a fantastic team. So thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to hand over now to Mark.